Hey, you guys. Today's topic is respecting people's boundaries. But first, let's have a little Monday motivation. I'm going to give you a motivational quote having to do with the topic. Love yourself enough to set boundaries. Your time and energy are precious. You get to choose how you use it. You teach people how to treat you by deciding what you will and will not accept. Okay, don't be afraid to set boundaries and stick to them. It may upset some people. That's when you know where their respect for you ends. You understand what I'm saying? Because what do my boundaries have to do with anybody else? So back to the topic at hand. A few weeks ago, me and Alex decided to have a cookout. We don't never have people over our house. And, you know, I got a real nice yard. I, I worked hard at making it a nice little urban oasis for me. And so maybe share it with people sometime. But you know what? <sighs> People just get on our damn nerves. We don't want nobody in our house, really. Because you got some people that linger. They don't know when to get the hell out. Get the hell out of my house. God damn it. Why do I got to tell somebody, all right, it's time for you to go? Like, you don't know how to get the fuck out of somebody's house. Then you got people that want to keep nagging about shit. They want to keep drinking your drinks and eating your shit. And they didn't bring their own goddamn snacks. And that's one of my rules. I tell people all the time. When you come to my house, like, I share. I'm, I'm giving and everything. But I don't like to share my favorites. And really, you know, everything I got in here is my favorites. Else why would I have it? So now you can come over here and eat up all my favorites. It ain't no bullshit that costs 50 cents. Okay, so all I'm saying is if you're willing to eat bullshit that costs 50 cents, don't come up in here and then want to eat up all my delicious shit. Because let me tell you what else. They'd be the same people who will sit there and argue with you or want to debate you about what good healthy eating is and how it tastes and whether or not they kids eat and all this other fly shit. And then they come up to your house and then want to eat up all your motherfucking favorites. All your snacks, all your little uh, specialty waters and shit that you get from the Whole Foods. Ain't like you can just go to the corner store and buy you a bottle of water because you don't drink that bullshit. And you damn sure don't drink no tap goddamn water. You go get the Whole Foods water. You got to go at least fucking 10 miles to get any. And then they find with drinking spigot water at home or, or, or Deer Park or Poland Spring or whatever the fuck they into. Why didn't they go to the sink and get some water? I don't care no water cold. It ain't like you say I want some cold water. You just want to drink up my water sitting on the counter. Just like that, that shit sitting in, in pipes. Get, mm, I'm going to get off topic because I'm going to get irritated about it anyway. This is why we don't have nobody over. Because then, you know, you might be like, well, girl, you're just being standing. I, I don't give a fuck what you label me as. Let me tell you what it is. Mine. Mm, it's my house. It's my motherfucking shit. It's my motherfucking. And this is why I don't have nobody over the motherfucking house. I digress. So we decided we're going to have a little cookout. We're going to invite some folks. But the point was. I said, I want to invite all my family and some friends, whatever. Mostly, fuck a good time. You have a good time poisoning yourself every day like you've been doing. I wanted to show people they can come over here. They can taste all kind of delicious vegan plant-based foods with no poisons in them, no processed shit, none of that. Just all handmade from scratch, boom, bam, done, baby. Deliciousness, right? So I was like, that way, I could show my family that they don't have to, um, like, miss out on nothing or, um give up their favorites or nothing like that, they could still eat all the same foods that you they love. You know, they burgers, they fucking hot dog sausages, crab cakes, and, you know, whatever else you fucking into, macaroni and cheese, all that kind of shit. And it just don't have to have the poisonous animal products in it, right? One of my fucking aunts and I had a stroke. She only 50. That don't make no damn sense because you're eating bullshit. You understand? I told her two years ago, stop eating that bullshit. She argued with me. She actually had a whole full-blown argument. Now, I guess mm, that didn't work out too good. Now, now she on a plant-based diet for two meals out of the day. That ain't, look, you're just going to slowly poison yourself. Get it together. Stop with the cognitive dissonance. That's what I wanted to prove to my family. Now, you know, the main people that I wanted to come so they could try to get their health together, they didn't even come. You understand how that worked? Then I had one aunt. Who decides to call me the next morning. I send out a text message to everybody. And I said, um, so to prepare people for the cookout, you know, because I don't everybody don't know that we um vegans or whatever, or they might not, you know, remember, or whatever it might be. So, or you know, they thought it was some type of phase and we was gonna go ahead and get the fuck on out of there with that shit. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not fitting to go back to poisoning my body. No. Oh, by the way, if you need a good recipe for this upcoming Fourth of July celebration. And you don't want to eat poisonous little pork flesh, then why don't you check out this plant-based rib recipe for today's tastes? But first, let's have a message from our sponsor. How long is too long to let your hair drip down your neck all day?
Hey, you guys. Today, I'm going to show you how to make some um some ribs out of tempeh. So, they're going to be like uh, boneless ribs. All right. You can get this from Joe's. Okay. This is a three grain tempeh. First thing you want to do is make some vegetable broth. Now, I told y'all how to do that before, but I'm going to show you again. I had a bag of frozen scraps because I freeze my scraps after I cut up my vegetables. See that? That's all scraps in there. That's some dead um, shallot butts and asparagus butts. You know they hard and chewy and stringy. You can't eat them. Chop them off. Pepper butts. All the zonks. Put it in there. Make sure it's clean first now. You don't want to be make. you know, you don't want to be making uh, vegetable broth out of like um, dirty birdie vegetables. You didn't rinse off the skins to the potatoes or whatever before you peeled them. Then don't put the dirty skins in there. But that's your business. All right. So I already boiled this. And I done poured some off into this pot here. See that done turned into a nice broth. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my tempeh and I'm going to cut it into like portion sizes, you know. So we're going to get into this. See that size? Now I get about five cuts out of a, like a log of tempeh. Put them in my broth here. So this is like you're going to marinate them. I think this gives the texture a little bit of a better feel in the mouth when you eat it. So that's the uh, that's the tempeh in the broth here. Okay, now I'm going to put that on the stove for 10 or 15 minutes on low to medium heat. So I'm going to take them out. Now, you can pour this broth right back in the same, uh, in the pot. You ain't got to discard it or nothing. Ain't nothing wrong with this broth. You just need to pour that on in the container and use it again later to make some rice or lentils or whatever you into. Okay. I'm going to heat this um, cast iron griddle on the stove. If you don't have one of these, you better get out there to the uh, barbecue grill outside. Else get one. Okay. Time to season these up. First thing you want to do is you smoke sea salt. Okay. He has. Anytime you want something to taste like meat. You want to put some smoke seasoning in there. You don't want to be too liberal with this because you're not using this for the salt. You're using this for the smoke flavor. And I'm going to tell you right now, this here is expensive. This little bit, this little bitty bag or whatever, about, about $10, $15, or something ridiculous like that there. So so don't be uh using no copious amounts of that. You can mix that in with some regular type salt. Save you little coins. This is white peppercorns. Put some regular black pepper on there too. And you just gonna season these the way you was normally season your ribs. I don't know what you into. And I got some uh South African smoke seasoning from Boyfriend Joe's once again. I got some garlic and herb salt free seasoning from Auntie Aldi's. And uh brew pub chicken seasonings from again Auntie Aldi's. I don't know, whatever. You know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put some of this uh I think this came from Auntie Aldi's too. Steak seasoning. I'm gonna smell it first. Let me see. Yeah, all right, that'll just a, just a little bit. I don't know about this one. I'm gonna drizzle me some grapeseed oil up on here. I probably should have brushed them first with this, but I forgot. I ain't think about it. Again, on the other side, I'm gonna do this first this time. Act like I know. All right, not too heavy on the oil. That cast iron griddle, that'll. That'll piss you off. All your good fixings will stick right on it. So, same thing again. We're going to just go back over the other side with the seasoning. And you don't have to be uh, worried about not putting enough seasoning on this kind of thing. Because, of course, we're going to put barbecue sauce on it too later. So, whatever. Now, by the way, tempeh is uh, fermented soy. Beans mashed together, basically. Now, I don't eat a lot of soy. I try to stay away from it, you know, as much as I can. But... Fermented soy is uh, supposed to be good for you, not not like the rest. They perhaps got some other type of tempeh you can find them by, but I don't know nothing about that. If you know something about that watching, please drop me a comment and let me know. And if you're not already following me, make sure you do so. Comment, like, subscribe to my YouTube, all that kind of good shit. Everything Live Decent. Live Decent channel on YouTube. You know where you at on Instagram, whatever. All right, I'm going to flip these onto this griddle pan real quick. And of course, you want to put some type of, you want to put some type of oil in this here. You got it too, because they're they going to stick bad. You're going to be mad and salty. You want to grill these for about four to five minutes on each side. 
So, flipping these over for another four minutes. All right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take some of this Texas style sweet and smoky barbecue sauce. But I forgot when I boiled them, I usually put a little uh, vinegar in there. I didn't do that. I like to use rice vinegar when I want something to taste porky. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of that rice vinegar in there. This ain't no measurement, y'all know I don't measure from, you know, my, my videos before, I don't measure nothing. Figure it out. I'm gonna put some of this here barbecue sauce up in there. And barbecue sauce already got vinegar in it. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Make my own recipes. And I got some of this here uh, minced garlic. Now here we go. I get to show you. See I got my nice grill marks. Now, now you can brush this on if you want to be fancy. I ain't finna be fancy. But I don't I don't want to uh, dirty up no more dishes. I don't know how I feel about that. Get them in there, roll them about, whatever. And you ain't gotta be fancy with your sauce and be mixing and shit. The barbecue sauce is delicious by itself. You didn't have to do none of that. You get the right sauce. I got the right sauce. But I felt like being fancier today. You gonna put these in the oven now? On 400 for about 10 minutes okay these is fresh out the oven but i'm gonna flip them and dip them again you don't want them to get like crispy i don't they got their millet in there because it's the three grain kind so they might get you know i don't like a crisp on my damn ribs and i done told you that's the key i don't want to taste no help i don't want to taste no help if this gonna come out tasting like grains and soybeans ain't nobody gonna eat that shit nobody I don't give a damn who you think you are, how healthy your tongue might fucking feel. I, that ain't a thing. All right, that's the finished product out of the oven, y'all. Look at that. Garlic barbecue, tempeh ribs, avocado with a homemade balsamic vinaigrette with minced garlic and capers, and rosemary purple potatoes, y'all. get into this, okay? I think I'm gonna want some extra dipping sauce for my ribs though. I like a saucy rib. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. That's it for today. Bye. So, anyway, I sent out the message. I said, everybody invited. Um, but I need your RSVP because I'm going to make all the food. Now, my family the type of people that bring something. I wanted to tell them, let them know. Don't, I said, if you don't know, me and Alex are strict vegans. We don't need nothing with animal products in it. So, please refrain from bringing any food to our home. Okay? But please bring your own beverages. You understand what I'm saying? Because I felt like I'm buying and cooking and preparing all the food and I'm giving it to you. You don't have to bring shit. Like, you don't have to bring nothing. Right? Don't even bring no cups or plates or nothing. Cause I bought all fucking sustainable fucking birch and bamboo plates and all this all the kind of shit. Cause that's what I'm off the plastics and all that. But I said bring your own goddamn beverages. Okay? Cause I don't want to have to go back to the store in the middle of the week, the day after the day I just came back from the store. Cause I gotta buy more water. Cause you know you people that came to my house and drank all my water. We don't drink nothing else. So ain't nothing else in here for you to drink. And what I wasn't gonna do was buy a bunch of fucking cases of bottled water. Cause again. We don't use single-use plastics. I'm not going to buy a case of water for some motherfuckers to come to my house and use them. That's the same thing. I'm still contributing to that. So, I know they already got shit at home to drink. Bring it with you. You understand? Or stop off and get some. See, because they don't have nothing to do with me. But, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not quitting any thirst here today. And I say it in the text. I put in parentheses. Including water, juice, liquor, beer, whatever you want to drink. That's what the text message said. One person who calls me the next day and tells me that my text message was extra. So I bust out laughing. I said my text message was extra. She said, yeah. How you, how you gonna tell people they can't bring nothing to your house? You can't tell people that. I said, what? I said, well, yes, I can. I can tell people whatever the fuck I want to tell them that they're going to be doing that in my house. No. You, well, you know you can't change nobody's eating. People just gonna go ahead and go home and eat burgers and hot dogs or whatever they want to eat anyway. I said, I don't care what people do when they leave my house, but you're not bringing that shit here. 
You understand what I'm saying? Because I would hate for somebody to bring something here. Like, you know, like I said, everybody in my family, they'll always bring something. So, you know, somebody might have wanted to bring, you know, um, a pan of barbecue wings or, or whatever. And, like, you're not bringing it in my house. And you're also not putting it in my refrigerator. So, because you're not using my utensils. You're not putting it on none of my plate. No. Because now I got to you No. Uh, no. You should be done drip, dropped all over some. Mm -mm, you're not bringing it here. Then you got to leave your food in the hot, blistering fucking car. And it's going to go back bad before you get it home. So, I like to tell people, don't bring the shit here. Just don't bring the shit. She proceeds to tell me that, you know, like, that ain't none of my business. And I can't tell people what they can and cannot eat. And that they can't bring none to my house. I said, well, and me, she went on and on. I said, well, listen, if you feel that strongly about it bothers you so much, then, you know, you just don't, just forget you seeing a text message. Just, you know what, you ain't even got to come. You ain't invited, you uninvited, whatever. So she, so meanwhile, me and Alex cracking the fuck up because I just thought it was hilarious. And also, like, she crazy. It's just like, it's a crazy, it's a family member I've come to learn is, you know what I'm saying? So she go, that's rude. You, how you want to touch my day uninvited? I said, well, you, you making such a big deal about, like, the rules of the land in my fucking house. Like, you got a damn say about it. I don't know if she think, because she like an older family member. Like, you know, like, you, you took, you watched me when I was a kid. Like, I'm supposed to have, I'm got to just do whatever you say, because you an elder. Like, I just got to listen to the elders. I'm not into that. Let me explain something to you people who don't, aren't familiar with this. Um... I'm going to say a saying, okay? Your grandmother taught it and your dumb ass bought it. Meaning, something don't have to make no motherfucking sense to you. But you'll keep doing it because that's the tradition. Or that's what you were taught. Or that's what your family does. That's your culture. Or that's just how it's been done. That's the way it's always been. I, I, you understand me? I live my own life. Um, I meet people where they are. And let me tell you where you are in retrospect to my life. You are not, or it, it'd be better to tell you where you're not, okay? You are not paying my bills. You are not putting stocks and bonds in my name into my portfolio. You are not investing into me. You are not wiping my ass. You are not feeding my belly. You are not clothing my back. You are not brushing my hair. You are not roofing my head. Let me explain. Once you're an adult, that ain't got your hand out like a cup to nobody. You don't owe anyone anything. How you doing? Except for your children. Because you had them and made them. And that was your decision. And that goes the same way for these aunts and these uncles and these grandparents out here. And these parents who think that kids owe them something. Um, Like you, like you owe someone respect because they take care of you. But you decided to take care of me. I don't give a shit how, what circumstances brought you under the condition that you're raising and taking care of a child or helping to take care of a child. At some point, you decided to do that. Because you could have said to hell with this. You could have decided not to have kids. You could have aborted your kids. You could have sent them up for adoption, put them in foster care. You could have left them at the fire station. You could have did anything you wanted to do, but you decided to have them. And now you try to unburden them like they owe you some goddamn motherfucking thing. They don't owe you a thing. Let me tell you what they owe you. I can't even say appreciation for being alive. If you're not a white Christian male in America with generational wealth to leave your children, then you fucked up. You selfish ass. You didn't have these kids and you left them, you, you brought them here with nothing. They probably going to leave with nothing unless they struggle bad their whole life to get something. Because you sure shit didn't have nothing to give them. You struggling still too. I mean, if you, in, if you in the normal, if you in the situation that most black folks is in, you, you struggling too. I don't understand. This is bullshit. This is just nonsense. And in any case, in my house, did you, you not my wife, in my motherfucking house, I can say and do what the fuck I please. Period. Period. So, um, that's how you can get uninvited to the cookout. So you want to mind your manners when it comes to somebody else's business at their house and what they doing and what they not going to do. Because if you got a problem with that, don't the fuck go. Don't come. And then, so if they tell you, go ahead and don't come and don't go, don't get mad. Nigga, you don't. You, you, obviously, you didn't want to come because you can't, you don't want to do these. That she going to say, I don't even eat that stuff anyway because this is a person that don't eat beef or pork since forever. I don't, 
so, but you do eat chicken and you do eat fish and you do eat turkey and you do eat butter and you do eat cheese and you do eat sour cream and you do drink milk if you don't get all the way the fuck out of here see i don't understand if some people think because they are taking um um arsenic instead of ricin that um or like you know they're gonna take a bit of uh cyanide instead of a bit of rat poison that that means something that don't mean nothing that don't mean nothing so you're gonna die from poisoning yourself now a lot of people been telling me lately when i tell them about why i don't eat the the nonsense they say well shoot i'm gonna eat you know i'm eat. i like cause you know well shit we all gonna die from something well i'm not gonna die from something i did to myself so there's that there's that that debunks that whole bullshit stupid as fuck mentality because we all gonna die from something i like to possibly die from just being the fuck tired of being here like because you know i'm old as shit and me and my wife done done everything we could think of and we still hanging on together and i look at her one day and she'll look at me and i say you ready to go and she'll say yep and i say me too and it'll just be like that if i'm gonna die from something that's what it ought to be it ought to not be heart attacks fucking uh drug overdoses alcohol abuse uh depression or suicide because you know <laughs> life you know um so you know good luck with that one that one's a hard one you got to take that uh one day at a time sometimes every five minutes at a time to keep from you know down from something like that now, anyway stress you know high blood pressure diabetes stroke i don't want to go into war getting shot in the face obesity liver disease goddamn fucking alzheimer's whatever i'm not gonna be dying from none of that not if i can help it breast cancer colon cancer prostate cancer fucking fibroids causing you all kind of bullshit all your life i'm not dealing with it not if i can have anything to do with it and i can i don't have to shovel fuck shit in my mouth and i don't have to allow people to come to my house and do it because you know what that does that makes them believe that their behavior is not that bad and that you're okay with it you choose not to do it yourself but you're okay with them doing it around you would you so my question to you is would you let auntie claudette come over and smoke cigarettes in your house even though you don't smoke because she your auntie because she's your elder um well, what about your cousin Kiki and them who always come over? They don't never bring nothing, okay? They don't never help clean up, and then they want to pack three plates to go when they leave. You going to keep inviting them over? Huh? I want to know. Leave me some comments or whatever. Let me know what you feel like. When does your societal or familial obligations to people and their relationship to you and the delusion you have about what all that means when does that end and your self-respect and your self-boundaries start and begin i, I want to know that from people when do you choose yourself and your boundaries and what you're going to accept in your life over you know your mother or your father or your sister or your brother or your cousins or your aunts or your uncles or your friends that's all in need or want you to do what they want you to do instead when when do you choose you over them or i want to know when do you when why when is it okay to choose them over you when it's not like you know um life or death you still have a choice don't get caught up in that people so that's all I want to say for you all today. Don't mess around and say or do something to, you know, a grown ass person and think that you ain't going to be like Becky and get uninvited to the cookout. You can't sit with us. All right, y'all. Remember, be decent to yourself and then be decent to everybody else. Bye.